Genius Brain listeners, this podcast is brought to you by Raycon, my friends. If you're looking for high quality things at the best price when it comes to wireless earbuds, you are in luck. We are talking about Raycon wireless earbuds, my friends. Raycon's mission is to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. Three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functions, noise isolation, and so much more. Go to buyraycon.com slash brain today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash brain to score 15% off buyraycon.com slash brain. Genius Brain listeners, you already know, I mentioned this quite uh, a while ago, but pre-orders will be starting soon. We will let you know. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram, follow Secret Society, and we will let you know when the Genius Brain Secret Society anime-inspired shirts are dropping for pre-orders. The pre-orders will be roughly about for two weeks. First people order, uh, get their shirts first. So just keep that on your calendars and get ready. I'll let you know when it's going to happen when pre-orders start. Just follow me on David So Comedy and also follow S-C-R-T-S-O-C-I-E-T-Y Secret Society on Instagram and sign up for the emails as well. Put the blame on me and they were saying that like it was my fault and that it was my attitude and my pride is the oh, reason why Oh, they love why using that shit. word. Yeah. Right? Because they were even pride. you know what's worse? You want to hear this one? They were like God told me that you have to do this. That if you do this video, he will bless you. I'll be like, dude, that's crazy. In five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, for those of you who are first time listeners and those of you who aren't, uh, you probably heard me say this a million times. Welcome to chaos. <laughs> Genius Brain is not a podcast about intellectual thought. It's a the exact opposite. It's just you're the fly on the wall and you're listening to people you're talk listening about listening to our brain farts. Exactly. It's just coming out of our mouths. <laughs> yes. Um, I do want to address something real quick. Um, it's something that has been on my heart. And I wanted to say this to the people who wrote these comments when I was doing the whole, when I, you know, we were talking about the whole thing that happened with the Dalai Lama. And from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say this like straight up, fuck you. Like, <laughs> Like, I was like, um, oh. fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it, fuck you. Oh, damn. All right. <laughs> Let me explain this thought. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> All right. The audacity. All right. This is the funny thing about the internet. <laughs> 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 this is the thing about the internet that irritates the fuck out of me. We don't know what's true or not, yeah. right? Before I did the Dalai Lama podcast, right? Three days, I read up about this stuff. I was trying to read about the religion. It was so confusing. It was stressing me the fuck out, right? Mm -hmm. So the podcast comes out, obviously, you know, after more information comes out, right? Yeah. But I sat on it for about a week like six, seven days. And this is all the information that was coming out. The only information that was coming out was that when he stuck out his tongue, right? The reason behind that, that was only online, the nothing else came out was that it happens in Tibet because it's, it's something that happened when they had like the despotic ruler who had a black tongue because he was evil. So mm -hmm. in order for people to show that he, that he isn't reincarnated in them, they would stick out their tongue. I right. don't have a black tongue. Right. That was the only reason that was given out. There was a Vice article that came out that said that old people in Tibet, like grandmas and grandpas, will be like, stick out your tongue. And they won't, it's, the literal translation isn't suck my tongue, it's eat my tongue. Right. And right. the Dalai Lama can't speak English very well, so it came out really weird. Right, right. So here's what I fucking hate about some people you didn't know either. <laughs> you didn't know either. You saw the Vice article after the fact, waited two days later, and then you said, David, I can't believe you didn't know this. Do your research. You just found out. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the most fucking animated I've ever seen you, bro. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> So, fuck you! <laughs> Do you have any idea how much of a psychopath you have to be to just find out information and then shame somebody else for not knowing for something you just found out? 
Bro, in the video, I put all of these like references, everything from like all these different places, websites. I was reading up about it for three fucking days. Right, and right. I was Googling things saying like, what does this tongue thing mean? Is there a, another meaning for it? The only thing that popped up was the explanation of the despotic king. That's it. Right. And even when it first came out, people were defending him saying it was in reference to the king. Nobody, not a single fucking article, not a single comment on YouTube explained that the translation was wrong and he right. was saying, eat my tongue. Right. And this is what, oh, nobody said it until the Vice article. And then people start copy and pasting the Vice article, writing comments to me. This is what it actually means. I'm from Tibet. You're copying and pasting the Vice article. You're not from <laughs> Tibet. <laughs> and then your avatar is like Buddha. <laughs> Heck you. <laughs> I hate it when people do that. And they're like, you can do better, be better. You know what can be better? When you suck my nuts from the backside. <laughs> I did my research to the best of my ability, Yeah. okay? I did yeah. everything that I could to the best of my fucking ability. When you just find out information, you say, hey, David, we, this Vice article came out. We just found this out. This is what it actually is. Don't say, I knew it the whole time. And let me give you even more back reference, you fucking shangnamosekiders, all right? <laughs> I have a friend, it's not his real name, but it's, it's, it's a nickname that we call him, we call him Pooj. <laughs> Pooj's parents are fucking Tibetan Buddhists, right? Right. Which I never understood because I always thought Buddhist people were Chinese, but apparently like Buddhism started like in India. Yeah. I didn't know this, right? Which was always confusing me, never put two and two together. So, you know, we're joking around, right? I hit up Pooj. I'm like, so what's up with your parents? The freaks or what? You know, and he's <laughs> laughing, right? And then I asked him, I was like, is that like some like, like Buddhist shit that they do? He goes, nah, my parents think that he's fucking weird. <laughs> right? Yeah. So his parents thought, that, so, you know, I'm, I'm getting all these, I was like, okay, so it's not this black and white thing right. where it's everybody in Tibet and India know right. that this is fucking normal. Then I even put in a reference where there was, um, uh, a child's right activist group in Delhi that was like, we know about the tongue thing. That's weird. Mm -hmm. So I did my research. Nobody fucking knew about that type of stuff. Right. Yeah. I understand. Right. Here's some people like they came in like, well, you know, he's our religious leader. Listen, we've talked about multiple times on this podcast about Christian leaders who we shat on to none of you. Right. Ever defended them. Oh my God. I, I talk so much shit about Christian people for the last three years, dude. <laughs> no, no. Not one person said, hey, you don't talk about religion that way. Yeah. Not one fucking person. I shit on Phil Wickham. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, the hell are you dude, talking Matt about? Matt Redman is like a rat face, ugly dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Chris Tomlin short. Yeah. Like, I mean, David Crowder's homeless. <laughs> you know? But nobody said anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the like this is I just was so I just wanted to get that off my chest. I understand if it is your religion, it's a very sensitive sore spot. All right. But so is sexually assaulting a child. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I don't know if that's the case or not. But yeah. from my perspective, that's what it looked like. And from my research, from what I found, it was just and things just didn't fucking add up. Yeah. And it doesn't, and it still doesn't make sense to me a little bit if you guys just want to tap into like just step out of yourself for a second. Why did it take like a week and a half for them to be like, oh, the translation's wrong? Mm. So the, here's the other thing that I wanted to bring up that somebody else brought up in a comment. And this person was going off on me. They're like, what are you, a CCP cuck? I was like, what? <laughs> I'm Korean. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. First of all, I'm Korean. You yeah. fuck. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. And so they're saying that this possibly could be like an attack from the CCP. Where, uh, because this didn't happen recently. Yeah. Well, so why is this resurfacing now? Right. So they're saying they're using this as propaganda to kind of like destabilize them and kind of fuck with them a little yeah. bit, which also kind of makes sense too. So this yeah. thing was just a lot bigger than you, what- You know how the situation, there's two Dalai Lamas, right? There's two? Yeah. There can't be, that doesn't make any so sense. So the Dalai Lama we know, you know, who's world famous is the Tenzin, Dalai Lama. Tenzin Gyatso. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a Dalai Lama that's approved by the CCP. Of course, fucking, so they're they would have a counterfeit to, Dalai Lama yeah, in China. So, so the CCP <laughs> is trying to promote this Dalai Lama and say, no, this is your guy, not that guy that the you world loves. You got an Alibaba Dalai Lama, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 
The audacity. Wow, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this Alibaba ass Dalai Lama, which this now makes more sense. Yeah. Now, now it makes I sense get it. why they would they would do shit like mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah. How the fuck was I supposed to know? You cuck, you CCP cuck. Yeah, like, <laughs> like oh, I'm, I'm from the Communist Party. Yeah. Please <laughs> get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? Hey, man, new information comes out. We get a chance to fucking speak about it, you mm -hmm. know? So, once again, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you very much. Yeah, and I'm also very sorry. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right? Uh, Korean to the end. Yeah. It's the both, like, extremes. You, It's true, though. You feel both of them. <laughs> fucking shang no mo seki there. So fucking sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so fucking sorry I found out after you guys found out, all right? <laughs> Jesus. None of you were saying that in the beginning of the video, but two days later, suddenly you have all this information? Yeah, I read it too. Everybody's got a reaction, man. I'm a so sorry. <laughs> okay? I'm a so sorry. Jesus Christ, man. Well, it's just an unfortunate video, but then it's like, you know, at the same time, like, I can see why they're pissed. Yeah, I get Because it. you can realize in whatever, right? But guess what? Millions of people around the world, the story has already ended. Yeah. And they're not going to hear you. So I'm correcting about. it right now. Yeah. It could be a CCP attack because they're trying to promote the Alibaba Dalai Lama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The fucking Jack Ma Dalai Lama. I yeah. get it. Okay, and that's a very big possibility. We don't know what the fuck is happening in this world. I don't mm -hmm. get anything at all. Yeah. So when they brought that up, I was like, oh, this is very interesting. You don't, you think that I was going to sit there and be like, no, not real. I don't know anything. I'm open to new ideas all the time. Yeah. Just type it. And I, and I pinned somebody's comment because they were very kind. They were like, hey, I'm from Tibet and I wanted to let you know, which that person most likely wasn't from Tibet. They just <laughs> wanted to say that so they could sound like they're smart because once again, they copied and pasted the Vice article. Welcome thing. to the internet, right? Yeah. yeah. I am from Tibet as a black person. Yeah. You know, that was a version of that. Yeah. Maybe you are from Tibet. I don't know. Most likely you're not. And I feel like you're lying. But you said it very kindly. So I pinned it and I said, this is very important. <laughs> And still, people were calling me a CCP cuck, which is hilarious. I am not a Chinese. Yeah, there. If if that was the if that was the case, we wouldn't have shit on Mulan so bad. Exactly. <laughs> we would have been like, "This yeah. is great." Go back and listen to the Mulan review. We totally shit on it and expose it for being like CCP propaganda. I'm tired of saying David So's a communist. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you look like him, Jung. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm? A, you think I'm a number one a communist? <laughs> You crazy. The funniest thing about that is that how you were imitating Kim Jong Il with Kim Jong Il. He dies, and then his son comes out of the word works. We see him for the first time. And he looks like, like you. I know. <laughs> it's like how oh, great. Oh, it was so good. It was so good, dude. I was so mad when Kim Jong Il died because, like, I was like, dude, my character. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, David, that's a life you should be worrying about. Somebody died. That is like the most extreme yeah. idea of being like. People are so fucking funny, man. I just, I just, I've been holding that in for the longest time. And I'm so glad I got to say it, man. Dude, fucking, um, I told the story on the podcast with Tim. I wanted to tell you this shit. Like, you know, because when, when you and I, when you first saw me get crossfaded and I was mm -hmm. like in another universe. I've gotten like comments where people tell me like, bro. That's not what happens when you're on weed. I'm like, I know, dummy. I don't know what the fuck that was. It was a whole fucking dropper of Delta 8 right. and three glasses of vodka. It was nuts. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I literally thought I died. I literally told this man, hey, Ed, I figured it out. I've been dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? You're like, this is it. This is how I die. <laughs> If I could fuck with you, if I was a worse man, I would have been like, you should call your mom. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her goodbye. I literally <laughs> like blasted out of my body, yeah. floating in the air. And I was like, I've been dead this whole time. And I just, like, I figured out the matrix. Yeah, I was yeah, like, I figured yeah. it out. I've been dead. And this whole time, I just didn't know. I'm free. <laughs> so I thought I had it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> so I was with Robin and I got fucking high as shit. And then I went to uh, a pharmacy store after I left this house to get <laughs> to get allergy medicine because yeah. I was just fucking 
you know, allergy season is crazy right now. Like I've been sneezing like a motherfucker. I haven't been able to sleep. So I, I went to go get some shit at a pharmacy. Every now and then you'll meet like a very weird fan, mm-hmm. right? Most people very kind, but there's always somebody that comes out that's very odd. And I, this is the thing I dread the fucking most. I post videos of me training because it motivates people to work out and in yeah. turn it motivates me to work out, yeah. right? It's I've, your accountability. Yes, I've yeah. seen people lose weight through it. I've seen people change their lives through it. And it's something that I feed off of because mm-hmm. it keeps me going. It helps me stay in check because I want to be about the shit that I say about. I want to show people that I'm improving. I'm like one of the few people out there that show them boxing from day one where they couldn't throw a punch all the way till now. Everybody has seen the fucking journey. Yeah. And I, I don't care, right? Um, that being said, there's always going to be somebody that tries to throw punches at me. What? So this motherfucker, not even that way. He comes in, right? This guy, weird as fuck. Let's tell the story on Tim's possible. I'm going to get into more detail about this one. So there's a pharmacy close to my house that I, that I go to, right? Going in. This motherfucker <laughs> comes in. Yo, what's up, Dave? It's like, oh, man, I see you got fucking hands. And he's like, I don't know if he's drunk or Ooh. weird. He's like, oh, sa, 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 sa. Like, <laughs> like throwing jabs at my face and shit. Wait, like, at oh, the yeah. pharmacy? At the pharmacy because he recognizes me, right? He goes, uh-huh. oh, I see you got moves. Ah, 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 right? By the way, I'm high. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on, right? He's like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, you know, doing all this shit, like shadow boxing in front of my <laughs> face. Everything he's throwing at me is delayed. <laughs> right? So this dude, I'm not doing anything. I'm just like this, staring at him. Because <laughs> I'm high, yeah. right? But I think he took that as like me being irritated at him. Right. So he's thinking that I'm like too cool for school because I'm not really saying much, right? He yeah. goes, oh, I, then I, whatever. So he turns around, he turns away and he comes back and does this, right? <gasps> what? And I'm staring dead in his face and I'm not, I didn't flinch at all. He goes, oh, I see, man, you about that life. All right, that's cool, man. I, I respect that. And he walks away, right? But I was so high, he walked away and then three seconds later, I went, oh, <laughs> you too late. I, I was so delayed. <laughs> I didn't. I went. <laughs> I, just, I didn't fucking process it. <laughs> and so this fool thought I had. I was like a stone cold killer. Yeah. But the only thing I was high as a motherfucker. Yeah. I was like, all right, I see you got. You got heart, okay? And he walks away and just. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm so fucking high, dude. I don't know why I meet some of the weirdest people. Like, let me tell you something. Like, just because you see me, like, train here and there, you shouldn't walk up to somebody and just start throwing punches at their face. Yeah. It's weird. It's just socially awkward. Yeah. I don't understand what he was thinking. Were we supposed to box each other in the middle of a Walgreens? Like, what were we going to do here? Yeah. I, I don't I'm know. Just, like, weird. I think, like I said, I'm learning this, but a lot of people out there, man, you got to manage your expectations. Like, what are you thinking like is going to happen if you go up to someone and start throwing jabs like shadow boxing with them right what's gonna happen like yeah. what, if you, what if you actually hit me that would have hurt <laughs> yeah with your delayed reaction <laughs> yeah you would have hit me and i would have just been stone cold face and you would have walked away and i would have went <laughs> I, I think because i speak like, so like passionately and emphatically yeah people think that I'm ready to fight 24 mm. seven. Like, <laughs> no. no, there's a reason why I have a mouth on me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I'm not a fucking fighter. Yeah, if it comes down to <laughs> I have to, maybe yeah, I will. You're a shit talker. I sh- I talk shit. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, it's what I do. It's my fucking craft, baby. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, listen, if somebody ever came out to me in public, right, and they were like, "Look, I'm gonna fuck you up. I'm not gonna fight them." Yeah. Most like, listen, I understand. I, I be telling stories here and I'm like, look, I wish a motherfucker would. I have to say that. Because yeah. <laughs> I can't openly just be like, yeah, anybody could just fuck me. Yeah. You know? Yes, please don't. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to like, okay. Realistically speaking, yeah, everybody says the same thing when they see me. You're a lot bigger than I thought. <laughs> Everyone expects you to be like Shh. five, six. Yeah. <laughs> It was the angle of your vlog video. It was just because you know why I angled it because I wanted people to see my hat design. Yeah. Because if it's straight on, you don't, you only see the see bill. The bill, yeah. So I wanted people to see the hat. Yeah, let me see that. Right there. I remember when I did that. Like, hey, uh, it was um, what's her fucking face? Arden Cho. She was like, it was like, oh, that's really smart when you angle it, it makes your face look skinnier. I was like, it does. <laughs> <laughs> 
no idea. I oh, okay. I was like, oh, because I didn't know that's what girls do when they take selfies. They right. do it upwards because it makes their face slender. Yeah. Because I, I wanted people to see my hat. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> so I didn't know that that was a fucking thing, but it was like a, a beauty yeah. angle type of thing. Apparently. And then there was a point where people were using a ring light. Hey, uh, maybe dudes were doing that a lot. Yes. <laughs> the ring light cam. Yeah. Really fucking weird. And you yeah. see like the little halos in their fucking eyes, like little anime characters mm, and shit. It makes your skin look nice. Hey, hey <laughs> speaking of Arden Cho, I, I, I've been wanting to say this for the longest time and I ref refrain from this because I'm a good person. Jesus Christ, her Netflix show was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. It got canceled. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't say anything because... We're, we'll talk about it later because <laughs> yeah. you haven't seen it. Yeah. I watched three episodes and it was the longest, longest three hours of my fucking life. Okay. So you want me to watch three episodes? I want you to watch. I want to see if you can even get through three episodes. Okay. It is hilariously terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, a part of me always wanted to watch bad content to review it on purpose. Like, let's go, like, send us bad movies to review so we can make fun of oh, it. I please. always want to do that too. We could but. do the first, I, I, I forgot what it her, her show was called. It was like called, I don't know, Lawless don't know. in Chicago or something. <laughs> I have no clue. I don't know. And yeah. Like, you know, shout out to Arden Cho. She made her bag. I appreciate it. That's yeah. fucking dope. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> One of the worst series I've ever seen in my life. One of the worst representations for women I've ever seen in my life. Really? It made- it Well, that was the show with the caricature gay dude. dude yes. Right, right. Oh. It was the stereotype gay dude. It, the, oh. <laughs> Shout outs to you. I appreciate it. But I, look, now that the show's canceled, I could say this. If it was still going, I would never say it because I'm not trying to fuck up her bag. Yeah, like, yeah. I want her to make her money, be successful, all good. I would just be talking shit about it in private. You know, I would never let it go out in public. But now that it's canceled. Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> Dude, I was always thinking too, maybe we, I want to review like a bad Christian movie. Like uh, God's Not Dead. <laughs> like, have you heard that. of that? <laughs> I, I just want to watch a bad movie to just talk about it for a second. Oh, we could do bad movie reviews yeah. for sure. That'd be great. We'll do one after beef. Next time we'll do yeah. beef and we'll do a bad movie review. Yeah. Um. Throw it in the comments. What's some like a terrible movie for us yeah, to watch? Some terrible <laughs> movies. So uh, obviously I'm surfing through the internet and the, this world that we live in is so fucking weird. Like celebrity boxing has gotten so out of hand. Like mm. they mm. literally started whole promotions where it's only like YouTube, like streamers. It's boxing a each circus, other. dude. It's and the it, new circus. And I got to tell you, it's some of the most unentertaining things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like when you watch real boxers go, it's fucking crazy yeah it's it's kind of nuts how fast they are yeah their instincts and it's it's a sight to behold mm -hmm. and then you see influencer boxing which i actually the 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 last one that they did um it was this guy i really like it was the epic mealtime guy harley yeah yeah he boxed in it too but it was all for charity all the money went to charity yeah. which i think that's kind of that's dope. a lot better i yeah. i appreciate that a lot even that's though what it used to be celebrity boxing used to be charity fights yeah that's why Lamar Odom <laughs> fought Nick Carter or something. Because <laughs> it was a freak show fight. It was the craziest fucking fight I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Nick Carter's not the one that passed away, is he? I think they both passed away. Jesse McCartney? No, Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. Was that it? One of them passed away. But... One of them passed away, right? Yeah. It was, it was the Backstreet Boys' younger brother. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he he passed away. He wasn't the one that he was the one that was boxing. Yes, I think he boxed. Oh, that's so sad. Really. <laughs> but hey, it was for charity. It was for charity. Right. That's what it used to be. But now it's like they're realizing, wait, there's a lot of fucking There's a lot money. of money in this. Yeah. Um, but because of that, you know, Jake Paul lost his last match with the real boxer and it wasn't even close. It was like yeah. a split decision, but Jake Paul just got his ass pieced up. It yeah. was it was it was not a close fucking fight at all. And by the way, I say this because I was actually rooting for Jake Paul. I was pissed. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Right? Because I got kind of caught into the hype. Like the first thing that I was saying be in the beginning was Jake Paul's not a real boxer yet. Yeah. Uh, he has a long way to go. And, I, and you know, I, you kind of sucked in because, you know, he fought Anderson Silva and stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, maybe he's really dope. Mm -hmm. And then he fights Tommy Fury, who isn't that great himself because he's a beginner. Yeah. And he got pieced the fuck up. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. He's not that great. And now he's fighting Nate Diaz. Right. The Stockton bad boy. Right. Right. Um, listen, I love Nate Diaz. Right. 
But that motherfucker got CTE like nothing else. Yeah, his speech has been slurred since the first season of, it's of the Ultimate now. Fighter. It's yeah. so bad now. Yeah. I don't know what. Hey, motherfucking. Yeah, I fucking. I don't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah, I don't fucking. 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 I'm like, what is he saying? That's like, it's like all there. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So I guess they were out in New Orleans and that, that's where this uh, influencer boxing thing was going down. And then uh, Nate Diaz, there's a video of him choking out somebody who looks like it could be Logan Paul. Yeah. That's his whole thing, right? That he's a Logan Paul lookalike. That's his claim to fame. It's literally the saddest thing I've ever heard in uh -huh. my life. But they're out in New Orleans and you see this video, right? And if you guys haven't seen this video, you see Nate Diaz and this Logan Paul lookalike, which at first it was said that it was Logan Paul because he, he looks he like a crackhead like, version of yeah. Logan Paul. And they're like the same height, same build, everything. Yeah. Comes up, hands up, but he's walking towards Nate yeah, Diaz. Yeah, at him. And then next thing you know, you see him in a front choke and he fucking chokes him out. He knees him real quick, chokes him out, and then he drops him and he just walks away, right? Which is actually very kind. Yeah. He didn't throw any fists. He just- He put him to sleep. Put him to sleep and he fell over. And he cracked the back of his head, so he was bleeding a little bit, yeah. but he's perfectly fine. Um, Nate Diaz uh, got arrested, $10,000 bail. <clears throat> and like the comments are very interesting. Most people, I say 90% of the cop, 99% of the comments are like, he shouldn't be at fault for this. Yeah. And the 1% that believes that he should be, I don't think you understand what this means. So the, the argument behind that is that, well, clearly he was showing that he wasn't aggressive because he put his hands up. That only applies if you're backing away. away. Yeah, you can't put your hands up and progress forward. Yeah, that's deceptive. Exactly. <laughs> this man is a trained fighter. Also, too, it's on video. Yeah, like so. I, I guess p people in their mind think like, "Oh, this is this is like damning proof that he didn't want to fight because his hands were up." You know what also means that your hands are up? You want to fight. Yeah. What are you trying to do? Give him a hug? Yeah. So why are you moving forward? Move that way. Yeah. Don't do this and walk forward. You know what that means in the hood? I don't want to fight. I'm lying and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. Right? And so he did the gr the graceful thing of choking him out. Yeah. Didn't fucking throw in punches or blows. He just choked him out, knocked him out, and he moved on. The worst thing that happened was that he hit his head. And I'm pretty sure that wasn't his intention to no. make his head smack the ground. Yeah. His Real intention was to put him to sleep, which he did. You Why know? are you approaching a fucking MMA fighter? Yeah. Like a very well-known MMA fighter. That's a legend known. like Nate Diaz that way. Yeah. You know? Who's known not to give a fuck about yeah. it. How many fights under his belt? You know? You can include the losses, but still, that's how, how many times did he get in the fucking octagon? Over 40 times, right? Yeah. This guy's a very interesting dude, too. It's like, is the only thing you're known for is for looking like Logan Paul and you're I read somewhere where he's actually been training in combat sports. Like well, part of his social media is where he's been doing some MMA training. So it'd be like, I, I don't know. That might be bullshit because sh shit just pops up on your feed and somebody says something. But it was Jake Shields. Mm. He, I mean, Jake Shields says crazy shit. I don't even follow him. He just comes up on my feed. Jake Shields is fucking, yeah. he has CTE himself. Yeah, he's he says wild shit. Genius Brain listeners, let's face it, with copy starting at $5 and our bank account somehow always depleting, we are officially entering the dupe session. Most products do the same thing, but are priced differently solely based on the brand name. And that's where Raycon comes in because the wireless earbuds, my friends, are not only a good duplicate, but high quality at the best price. Raycon's mission is to prove they shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality, sound, and essential smart tech listening features. You get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of these other more big name tech brands out there. I use it when I jog, kickbox, uh, cook, just walk around the house, listen to great music, you name it, my friends. Let me tell you something about some of the features. Three customizable sound profiles, earbud tap functions, noise isolation, awareness mode, custom gel tips for the perfect, most comfortable in-ear fit you have ever felt in your life. And what I personally like about it, eight hours of playtime. Because when I'm on the plane, I need that extra playtime. Go to buyraycon.com slash brain today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash brain and score 15% off buyraycon.com slash brain. Uh, Jay, uh, so if you guys don't know, there's also a guy named Joe Schilling, and this kind of works in tandem because Joe Schilling was is is an MMA fighter as well. Yeah, uh, mainly known for kickboxing. Um, uh, he actually trains out in not Sidya Tong, but uh, the Yard. Yeah. Uh, out. Oh shit! <laughs> in Lincoln Heights. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's Joe Schilling. I've seen him multiple times there. Yeah. Uh, 
Joe Schilling is also kind of a meathead. Uh-huh. Uh, I think he's retired now, but he fought for Bellator and he, and he transitioned into MMA. Yeah. I uh, had a pretty, you know, half and half career in MMA, but his kickboxing career was great. Like, yeah. The guy's a, f- a fucking beast. Uh, Joe Schilling, there's a video clip of him of this guy who was drunk in a bar. And he's, he's like, like dancing, dancing to Dr. Dre, right? <laughs> yeah. Apparently he was like a huge <laughs> asshole in the bar. People oh, were right. irritated as, as fuck with this guy, right? And Joe Schilling being obviously a meathead himself, which look, Joe Schilling is a meathead. Yeah. Walking up and Joe Schilling on purpose, shoulder bumps the fuck out of him, right? right? Now that's arguable. Nobody can say if he did it on purpose or not. That's for us to ju- judge visually. But being a human being who has lived on this earth, I know when somebody shoulder bumps the fuck out of somebody yeah. to start some shit. So Joe Schilling shoulder bumps him and the guy says some shit to him, albeit he was very obnoxious. Joe Schilling obviously turns around and it looks like the dude is like coming at him a little yeah. bit. And Joe Schilling knocks the living shit out of this guy. That's fucking entrapment, man. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the drunk dude just fell into his fucking spider web, I feel like. Yep. He <laughs> fell right into it. Yeah. And he got cracked so fucking hard. Yeah. And you could kind of tell that Joe Schilling wanted that heat. Yeah. He wanted to knock him out because he was being obnoxious and rude or whatever. Yeah. Right? Um, but according to Florida and your stand your ground laws, um, Joe Schilling is not guilty of anything. That guy got fucked up. He got fucked up. Yeah. He got knocked out. But, but he was okay after right here. Um, but yeah, he fucked him up and I guess the guy has no grounds to like sue him or pursue anything or I guess because it was self-defense because yeah. I guess you see in the video of the guy raising his, about to raise his hands and just Joe Schilling's that much faster. Mm-hmm. So, but the thing about that is, it's like, yo, you didn't have to do that. It, it didn't have to go that way at all because you were irritated at this guy for being a jackass or an asshole. You didn't have to step in and knock his ass out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's the weird thing. Like, you're a, you're a trained fucking kickboxer, a champion kickboxer at that. You don't have, that guy was a, looks like a schlub. He's just like a regular Joe, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Obviously, like, why would you want to, like, destroy somebody like that? And yeah. I heard, like, some other stuff. People were saying, like, oh, I was there. You know, he, he, he was being rude to the waitresses and those staff. You don't get to knock out somebody for being a rude drunk. You know, at that point, then, use your size to be like, hey cut it out yeah you know use a little bit of your authority don't you know? set up the trap to fucking knock his yeah. teeth out like give him a warning like what does that do like clearly <laughs> this guy has anger issues like joe Schilling got yeah. some fucking anger issues man like because I, I you know we know people like who fight and stuff like that and i've seen like people who are training in mma from, they would never do that they're just mm-hmm. like god oh, this guy's being drunk and they're like who cares but he took it upon himself to you know teach this guy a lesson and for fucking what mm-hmm. like what was the point of that shit like you literally just beat this guy down for just being a loud drunk at a bar. If if Joe Schilling at any point in the video said, be careful, I'll fuck you up because I'm a trained fighter and he still came at him and then he knocked him out, then I'd been like, he warned him. him. <laughs> but this was just, that's why I say, that's like, just feels like entrapment. He just like- Yeah, I just feel like he just wanted to that. sock somebody, yeah. which is kind of like disappointing for somebody who is who fights at his, at, at his pedigree, right? Yeah. It's very odd to see something like that. I don't know, man. Some people are just fucking nuts. You know, when we're in K-Town, we always see like some of the craziest shit that goes down. Oh my God. The people who are just looking for trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of shit. That's why I don't ever go to K-Town, dog. Yeah. Like, you know how many times that we go, well, like I've been to K-Town and you're like, you're like, you'll walk by like a long line mm-hmm. and then somebody will look, just stare at you. Like they're looking at, you're, like, you're looking at my girl. <laughs> I was like, how can I look at your girl? I'm just walking. Yeah. <laughs> like, how is that even possible? Why does that even go through your mind? Yeah. And they're just looking to fight somebody all the fucking time. I gotta say though, I, like maybe I'm not going out there at those times anymore, but I haven't seen those type of people anymore. Like those kind of drunk Koreans just fucking being belligerent and trying to be a fucking hard. I don't think we go to those spots anymore. Right, calm doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't go to those it's spots anymore. We yeah. go to a little more adult spots where yeah. there's better food, better drinks, more chill. Like when we were going to like, you know, when we we're like side Chapman Plaza and all that other stuff, there's always some That's stupid right. Shit. Cause I went to Arena last year. I'm already old as fuck. And I went because somebody, you know, my friend wanted to go. So I went and my friend was DJing. So I had the invite. And yeah, I was so out of place. Mm hmm. Right. And I'm sitting there like, you know, just standing there with my drink. And then there's a 
booth, right? There's a bunch of booths and this guy's sitting on top of the seat and there's just all these people around him. And I just see him starting to like chuck his shoulders. Oh shit. <laughs> and then oh, <laughs> projectile my. puke, right? And it boom all over the table and everyone scatters like fucking roaches when the light turns on. It was like, uh, and he was like, that's covering the mouth and split and it was coming out because he was over there. <laughs> yeah. it was like ah! coming out right and then it stopped right and he was just sitting there alone for a good minute or two because he just couldn't right? believe what just happened and then he just got up and left and then the other dudes at the table were like which way where did he go and then they fucking chased him like they were gonna beat his ass for throwing up why <laughs> They fucking chased his ass to fucking kick his ass. And they I was like, beat his ass. Like, yeah. bro, he's already embarrassed. Yeah. He's that's why he's leaving. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I know you're yeah. embarrassed, but get this ass moving too. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> why? He's gone. Yeah. So I was like, damn, I I don't want to be there. And that probably ties into like fucking beef. They go the arena is featured in beef, Yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. That shit's hilarious. There's some weird, like moments in k-town just where i was like what the fuck am i doing here man like i there, there's definitely moments where i was in k-town i was like i hate this shit mm -hmm. um i recently went to this event where uh it was uh sponsored by a soju company right uh-huh and let me tell you something i was getting some k-town ptsd <laughs> It's the soju going through your brain. Yeah. Going, passing through your liver and you're like, oh shit. Like, yeah. Flashback to 904. People just talking an inch away from your fucking face. Uh, drunk as hell. Yeah. Everybody's Korean. <laughs> you know, talking a big game about who they are, what they can do for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm a big fan of yours, man. You know who I am? I make a lot of money. <laughs> that ton mano. Yeah. Yeah, I not, do import, yeah. export, you know, you yeah, whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you know a massage chair? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, whatever you need, let's do, let's work, let's work. You know, I'm, I'm obliging. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's whatever. And it's like, so what, what do you want? Let's do this business. And I always end every sentence like this. I go, before we even do work, let's see if we're going to even meet up for dinner. Hit me up. Yeah. We'll go eat and we'll chop it up then. Right. So they give me their number. He goes, Hey, this is the guy. You contact him. You let him know. Text him. So I literally text him that night. I was like, if you want to meet up, let's hang eat. Guess what? No response back. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, what is that though? I don't fucking know. It's like, like then obviously he can't get anything from you. Yeah. So he was just selling himself. I guess. Did he think that you were going to be like, yeah, yeah. Hey, yo, let's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, all right, cool. Hit me up if you want. The, the offer's there, you know? Right. Like, if you want, let's do something. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes, I have a lot of money. I was like, cool. Cool. <laughs> Unless that money's in my bank account. Yeah. I don't know if this is true Which or not. You might be a very about, important man. person. Like, we, we shit on so many people, man, but our own people sometimes. That's some weird shit, dude. You know, like, especially when you see us at restaurants, man, I... You know, when I eat in K-Town, I see an older boomer Korean treating the staff like shit. Yeah. Oh, I get ageism real quick. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't. There are certain things too, like, I don't know what it is. Um, Maybe it's because the Korean church experience was, there was a lot of good stuff. But yeah. There was also some bad things that I took away from it that I didn't like. Yeah. You know, we always talk about how culture and a fucking church just, culture always beats out church in Korean churches. Like it's mm. always Korean culture first and then church next. Yeah, Everybody yeah. goes to fucking church really only for business. Like it's just to yeah. make connections and you'll it's see that a in network. Beef. Yeah. Like that's literally what it is. It's it's a network for business. There's a church phone book, right? Do you have a church phone book? Yeah. The directory. Directory, right? And the backside is everyone's business. Mm -hmm. It's like how everyone could like, oh, I need my car fixed. I need teriyaki. I hella forgot week. about that. Yeah. You just reminded me of the directory that was sometimes in yellow, green, yeah. different like construction paper color. <laughs> Holy shit. I just remember that shit. Yeah. Like, and that's how Koreans did business with other Koreans. You got to go to church and get the fucking church directory phone book. There was just yeah. this weird feeling that I would always get, especially like 
the idea that somebody expected me to call them young mm. and just because they're older than just me. because and i'm like listen dude I don't fucking know you. <laughs> You're not my brother. <laughs> I would I would never call anybody Hung. And the only person I still call basically Hung to this day is my actual older brother. Yeah. I've never called my brother by his actual name. Yeah. I've only called him Hung. So when somebody else is like, hey, you call me Hung. And I'm like, nah, I, I'm not that fucking Korean. You know? <laughs> you know, like what I realized about myself, like I don't say Hung anymore, but then the people I do, Call young is because I'm scared of them. <laughs> okay. So that's like a deep seated thing from my past, obviously, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's let's just put this in perspective, right? Have I called somebody young because they were an affiliated gang member? Yeah. And if I didn't, they would have killed me. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. I'm saying the average person. Yeah, yeah. All right. So let's but, oh, but you don't do the thing with cranes. Like, when's your birthday? Oh, they're all okay. Young, no, young. No, and nothing then, like, like that. No, your name like is that. fucking Peter Kim. <laughs> yeah. All right. And your name is John Kim. Yeah. All right. And, and Joseph Kim. Kim. All right. <laughs> and for some reason, your name is Ezekiel. <laughs> Kim. <laughs> Ezekiel. Yeah. Even, your parents can't even say yeah. your fucking name. Ezekiah. <laughs> all biblical names yeah. and shit. Because <laughs> we definitely talk. So we're not saying names here. Yeah. <laughs> So we used to throw these parties at our at our apartment, right? And there was this uh, group of people that they used to they used to sponsor me with a bunch of clothes, but they were you know little gang pen yeah, like, right? Yeah, yeah, I know those youngs. And I remember one time this they they were just in fucking Ed's room just smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like I just remember I couldn't say anything. Yeah, <laughs> I remember like. So we were all drinking, having a good time, right? And I'm going into the kitchen and into the kitchen is right to his room. And I just see a bunch of guys in there smoking in his room. And I'm like, did he let you in there? And they're like looking at your manga books and just fucking, okay. you know, Korean Ajishi smoking yeah. and shit. I'm like, and I wanted to say something, but I thought I was going to die. Yeah, but you can't. Like, I, yeah, I know the, those youngs like. I can't say nothing. You can't say anything. <laughs> and they actually end up smoking like a, a gift of his that he got from his sister, <laughs> which was these North Korean cigarettes. Yeah. And they were not good. And they just chucked them. <laughs> They're like, dude, these things are so unfiltered. I'm like, yeah. I remember those because you showed me them. I thought, oh, this was really cool. You showed me all like the North Korean paraphernalia that your sister got you. Yeah. And I see these fools fucking smoking it. But then I didn't know it was, I was like, is that Ed's? They're like, dude, these cigarettes are so bad. And then you told me it was your cigarettes. Yeah, I was like, Damn, I'm missing some cigarettes here. <laughs> Let me tell you something. These dudes were, and it wasn't like a guess about like the shit that they would do, right? <laughs> like people know these people, yeah. right? And they, you know, they told me like, hey, be very careful about what you do and say around these people. Long story short with these people, once again, we're not saying fucking names. Later on, we found out one of them died, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. over some other crazy shit and some other violent stuff. Yeah. So there's a reason why I called him young, okay? Mm -hmm. And I did it because it, I was scared and <laughs> rightfully fucking so. Yeah. Right? So every time I remember, dude, the first, you just fucking brought this PTSD moment. So we're, they came to our place pretty frequently, right? Because, you know, they were giving me free stuff or whatever. Yeah. And honestly, I couldn't say no. Mm -hmm. I just had to wear it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on everything you were on. Everything I was on. Everything I wore you that were shit. on, you had to wear it. Yeah. I would have all, all your posts every, every day, day, every week. So listen, I wore that shit consistently. And it was like Illuminati kind of design shit. At the day. So everyone was like in the comments like, David's Illuminati. Yeah. <laughs> every week. Yeah. <laughs> David's Illuminati. Oh, what's this fool David about? Oh, maybe he is in some like gang shit. I'm like, yeah. no. <laughs> no. I have to wear this, yeah, guys. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm fucking scared. People still don't. I, dude, I was mentioning this to Khalif and Khalif was dying laughing because he remembered the shit. Yeah. He, was, he goes, that's why you were wearing that shit all the time? I was like, bro, this guy <laughs> literally came up to me, right? And we're still cool to this day. He's very fucking cool. He's actually a very different guy now. Mm. But people comes up to me and he literally grabs the back of my fucking neck. Like fucking like Habib to uh, fucking um, uh, the other the Russian, Russian dude box. right yeah, the back the of my neck he goes I'm young right <laughs> like grabs the back of my fucking neck and I'm fat too so I made a fucking yeah. fat little fat sound <laughs> you know when I just you slap right? I am yeah it's like I'm young right dog I fucking called that fool young from that point on yeah I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. 
I what said. am I supposed to do? Yeah. Right? Like I y'all getting punk. And these are the type of dudes, by the way, none of them say their actual real name. They got these fucking weird aliases. <laughs> you know I, I don't mean? know one of those young's real name. I don't know his real all. name either. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I don't know his real yeah, name. I got a I got a like one of those faux notifications, like someone you might know, and it was him because it was the same nickname. <laughs> Like, what's your real name yeah <laughs> nobody i don't yeah. know i don't think anybody fucking knows man yeah those that's the type of ptsd that i was getting from at that fucking soju event i'm like mm -hmm. they're, they're not all thugs they're none of them are yeah, yeah, yeah. none of them are right but they are very it's very the game green. that yeah. they brings out of them that i'm like yo, this, it's so the korean hollywood is it's weird dude yeah man. it's weird dude i'll fly you out to fucking new york yeah. hey get, get him a flight to new york really <laughs> Really? I had I had one of those, yo, we're gonna Yeah man, we're gonna hang out with Jessica, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I was like, who? Like Jessica Hong, Lee, which one? Which Jessica? He says, Alba. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> really? Please. Really? This fuck I it's the and it's the Koreans. <laughs> They just be saying this shit, way. dog. They just say like shit. the whole thing, like you gotta impress people all the time, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's like hey, I'll fly you out to New York. Hey, let me see if does your schedule work around like May fifth yeah. or something? Does it work? I'll fly out to New York. I was like, yeah, we can make it work. Let's go. Yeah. And I'm saying, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Get my. I was, he goes, you just you entertain the yeah. idea. Yeah. And right? he one ups it. He goes, only first class, right? Like you only like first class. Oh, I'm like, yeah. man, that, <laughs> I'm like, you're just getting that talk down, like, oh. and I'm listening to this. For fucking like 30 minutes, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, cool. Let's do it. I was like, but first, before anything, let's let's get a meal first. Mm. I'll text you after this and let's get a meal. Of course. And you know, for me, because I'm a man of my word, I just text them. Hey, man, it was great meeting you. Next week, whenever you want to grab a meal, let's grab a meal. Mm -hmm. No response back. Of course. But what's going to happen? Next time I see them, same shit. What happened, man? I thought, oh, I thought we were going to kick it. It's on you. Yeah. I thought we were going to do some business. You know, I thought we were going to make a big shot time. Oh, man. Like, maybe I don't hang out the same Norabang as you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, I don't like liars. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. I'm like, hey, bro, I actually hit you up. And by the way, I've actually said this before, obviously in jest, and, you know, I'm making things light, but I was. You know, you kind of get your point across by making jokes, right? So people laugh. Yeah. And um, I forgot. it was for K Town. Who the fuck was this company? And it wasn't a soju company. It was um, supermarket. A supermarket. Okay. It was a supermarket, very popular supermarket in K Town, right? But they wanted to do like promotions with like YouTubers or whatever, right? They were mm -hmm. talking a big game. Met up these dudes. Fucking, I just see smoking all this other shit. Yeah. You know, same thing. Oh, what do you know? I told Malo, I do everything. I'm a number one guy. Oh, God. You know what I mean? Just saying hey, all this other shit. Yeah. I'm like, okay, fine. Whatever. We reconnect, hit them up. Don't respond back at all. Right? Out of fucking nowhere. Like a year later, they want to do like Instagram promo stuff for the supermarket. Right? They're like, hey, what's your price? I was like, who's this? <laughs> and they go, he's like, you don't remember? Like we had a good time. We fucking know about did all this other stuff. I was like, yeah, I hit you up. They're like, oh. Did my guy not hit you up? I was like, cool, we'll, we'll work together, but you got to right. fire him. Yeah. Is he fired? <laughs> and he's just laughing. I was like, I'm serious. Yeah, you, there's fire a guy, him. right? There's some other factor here. Yeah, who's this guy? You should <laughs> yeah. fire him. Fire him. It's his fault. <laughs> I was like, I'll work with you if you fire him. He's like, ah, we can't fire him. I was like, no, I'm dead serious. You like, need to fire him. Oh, it, it's a me. <laughs> <laughs> it's him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just fucking around. But it's like, yeah. dog, I hate it. Like, why are you fucking with me, dude? Then you wouldn't believe it, man. Like that kind of shit's in Korean church too. Like, why, why do you got to fucking play a big game? Like it's church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. There's like people who, uh, like these elders in the Korean community in the Northwest, like they all got together and they wanted to put together a youth rally, right? Which is weird. Like you guys are like in your forties and fifties. I don't know why you guys want to put together a youth rally, but they just wanted to put on this huge worship event, right? So the idea is that every youth group worship team plays two songs each, and they go up and then it's just a worship night, right? And they wanted to host it at our church because we have a really 
big, you know, main sanctuary. And then, so they all met in Tacoma and said, hey, um, this, this channeling of some other church, I don't know, got my information and wanted me to come to a dinner meeting with all these other Changonims, like these elders from other churches who are putting together this event hosted at our church because they want me to MC it, right? So I was like, okay, I'll go, right? And when I go to this dinner, they order food, right? So there's just like old Korean men at a big tables, like 10 of them. And I'm sitting in the corner, right? But I barely have a seat. I barely have my own utensils. I don't have a cup of water, right? And they order all this food and they're passing around the chigas, they didn't give me shit. I didn't eat anything. They just ate it for you? They just ate it all in front of me. And the weird thing was I was sitting to, next to the fattest fucking Korean I've ever seen in my life. This obese Korean man who was trying to me. And then as he's eating, they're like talking in Korean the whole time. And then when it finally gets to the matter of emceeing, they say, oh, this is, you know, Edward Park. He's going to MC, And then this Fat elders eating and he looks at me. He's like, "Oh, how so? No, chare." And like, I didn't get any food, and I'm sitting there, and it's like, "All right, you know, thank you." Oh, it's like, and then they all left, and then the chanani that invited me was like, "Thank you, Ed." And I'm like, "I'm so hungry." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Dog!" Like, I was so much more upset at the idea that these. Older Ajishis didn't even Which let me eat. Which is actually very un-Korean. Yeah, it was so weird. It like, was so fucking weird. The most Korean thing would be like, oh, you haven't eaten? Like, we should feed you. Yeah. What kind of un-Christ-like bullshit? You know what I also don't like about Korean people who do shit like that? It's like, bro, you're a church. You're not a gang. Yeah. Like, what are you, some fucking gangpe shit? That's like, what I'm saying. They're elders, right? That means they were voted in because mm -hmm. they're Korean <laughs> Presbyterian churches. Then they got power over some, I'm, you don't even know who I am, Yeah, but I'm supposed to automatically bow down to them and be okay with not eating. <laughs> Dude, I literally, ugh, I know like we talk a lot about some of the bad stuff that happened in church. There's a lot of great stuff, too, yeah. right? but these are, this is the more interesting stories. I actually deleted this story from a previous podcast because I accidentally said this guy's name multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to take this out. But that was the other thing too, like, Korean sometimes like fellowship and brothership seems very gang culture like, right? Yeah. Like and it's shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like that's him just trying to piss on you and say like, you should know who the fuck I am. Yeah. You are a church leader, you fat, ugly fuck. What are you doing? You're not that important. And why are you even putting together this youth event anyway? Yeah. I don't understand. And but why is he belittling you, right? <laughs> like, that's the thing too, right? There's a lot of like Korean, like older young shit where they treat it like gang shit. But it's like, yeah. for me growing up, like I grew up around real gangsters. Like I knew fucking thugs. You know yeah. what I mean? I was never a thug, but I knew some motherfuckers, right? So when I would go to these churches and I see these people try to do that to me. Act like what you've seen yeah, before. I was like, dog. You don't understand what you're doing here is laughable, right? Yeah. Literally, I've told a story where a guy put a gun to my dick because I made a joke. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. You're over here like, hey, go pick, go pick up, go pick up the trash. <laughs> hey, get the chairs. Yeah, go, <laughs> go, go do it. Yeah, I'll fucking slap the shit out of you yeah. because there's no consequences if I do. I'm not scared of you. There's real people I'm actually scared of that yeah, will yeah. fuck my life over. You are not scary. And that's the phoniness that I fucking hate too. They just like, they like belittling you. Yeah. They would do that a lot. Like some of these older church people, they want you to know your place. I'm here. You're here. Know your fucking place. Yeah. Oh, you think you're cool because you do all this video MC shit? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I can do it. <laughs> yeah. That's what I saw. Yeah. That's what I saw. Yeah. That's what I saw. Yeah. I do it too. So I grab a mic. I do it. Oh, talkie, talkie. I do it. You know, they're. Yeah. You know, not knock, 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 <laughs> yeah, gotcha. you know what I mean and they only feel good if you if you know your place yeah you know yeah. and being spoken to like that but from those like from that part of that Korean culture is something I fucking hated so much but that's why I got driven out the church because I was fighting that shit mm. because the pastors I was dealing with at the church I grew up in like they were trying to make me do free video shit and I was fighting them like no 
everything. And it's wrong. What, uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, like it's a long. I've told it before, but like they were conspiring against me, you know, to withhold this money when there was money <laughs> set for me. They wanted the organization wanted to give it to me, and then they withheld it from me. And didn't want to give it to me, and then they put the blame on me. And they were saying that, like, it was my fault, and that it was my attitude and my pride is the oh, reason. Oh, they love why using that shit. word. Yeah, right. Because they were even, pride. you know what's worse? You want to hear this one? They were like, God told me that you have to do this. That if you do this video, he'll bless you. I'll be like, dude, that's crazy. I prayed yesterday yeah. and God told me that you got to suck my dick. <laughs> God, God told me if you suck my fucking dick. I literally thought that you were going to say something inspiring again. <laughs> no. I don't know why I keep believing that. <laughs> that's crazy. God literally said, yeah. he should suck your dick from the back. I hate, see, the, like, that's the thing too. Don't weaponize fucking religion. Don't weaponize yeah. God and use it against me to get something out of me. I don't like that. It's your pride. You know what it is? It's your ego. Mm -hmm. Don't call. Humble yourself. No, they, but, they're, but what they're really saying, not bow before the throne, bow before me. Me. Which come, you know, you have to bow down to my authority. I went to seminary. <laughs> yeah, I'm a messenger of God. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You know what's also a sin? Gluttony, you fucking mm -hmm. tejiseki. How about that? Yeah. All right? How about we start there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how are you going to preach about everlasting life when you might die when you're 50? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you ever had everlasting was a gobstopper, yeah, you fat dude. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, PTSD. I'm sorry, people. This is yeah. just bringing this up is old. Us. No, so like that's what... This feeling though, right? So like I said, I was gone for a while, mm -hmm. but earlier this year, I talked about my new year's resolution about going back to church. But now that I'm, I was in Washington, like I was just like, what are the only church I know there? And it was yeah. my home church, you know? Um, so I fucking went back to my home church, right? And the first week there, um, after the service, the, um, there was this couple that I've known since they were like in like college and stuff, you know, and they were like two separate kids I knew grew up and like they married each other, you know? So we went out to go eat pho afterwards and they were telling me like, they looked over and they're like, oh, is that, is that Edward Young? And then, but they looked at me, they said I was shaking. Really? I was shaking in my seat. because I was having like a stress response. Yeah. With me being in that church in particular, mm -hmm. they said I was shaking and like I was sweating, you know? Like, oh my God, Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Satan yeah. Either that, like, dude, if you're at a black church, that's the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know? <laughs> like everything, that kind of stuff. But I, for me, it was like, uh, apparently, yeah, I was having this stress response because of how I was hurt. Treated. Yeah. yeah, I was treated there. But then for me, one of the biggest reasons why I went back was exposure therapy. Because I had to tell myself, like, those pastors that hurt me aren't at this church anymore. You know, this is there's a new pastor here. This is like, it's been 12 years since it happened. It's different. It's different. There's all these different people at this church. You know, none of that. So there's some people there that remembered you. But yes, yes, yes. But they didn't know what happened because after I didn't tell them what you happened. Just left. I just bounced. Yeah. In their eyes, the way they saw it was Ed left our church and moved to LA. Yeah. And you know his he did his video career right, yeah. but in my shoes was I lost my home church, the thing that meant everything to me, that even when I started going to other churches in Seattle, I couldn't sit there either because I would like have these, yeah, stress responses, and I couldn't sing anymore. I couldn't play the guitar anymore. I couldn't like sit in the seat and listen to that because I would start just. You can, like any anxiety attack or a panic attack you know and, what yeah yeah so then i became an alcoholic and i moved to la and that's when all these people in la met me was i was fresh off the church hurt by this thing drinking like a madman yeah yeah, yeah. that's why if you look back at me at that k-town ed it we was a lot. the guy who was so such a regular i could walk around with a bottle of soju in my hand yeah and just drink it walk around k-town like that was me but that was me filling myself with all of that hurt and pain. Yeah, yeah. That so going back to church was me like 
working through it to be like, this is new, this is different. You know, time has passed. Because everyone else really did move on with their lives because of their perspective of how I live my life. Time just passed. They don't know anything about that. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm living this shit for 12 fucking years. And they're like, oh, he just left. Yeah. So I had to bring myself to that reality to be like, to be able to move forward while I was there. It was a tough time because every subsequent week was the same response. One kid after, he was like, oh, Edward, what's up? He's like, are you mad? I'm like, no, why? And he's like, your eyebrows are like furrowed. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. Yeah. It was just, I don't know. You yeah. Know, I was walking around like that. But like, I was there for like, two months you know so the subsequent weeks it got better and better exposing myself to that and i was meeting with old friends who knew me from back in the day yeah and i actually told them what happened finally i told them what actually happened to me and they were yes like a bit shocked mm -hmm. and you know i, I just want to be real you know a lot of these suburban churches don't exactly know how to respond to these things they said what did you do yeah <laughs> every single one of them they were like what did you do and that's the thing that drove me crazy yeah because i asked myself that every day for 12 years what did i do yeah and so i asked them i don't know what did i do yeah what was i like was i an asshole did i do something to piss them off and they're like no like they never thought of it that way right and so i was also living the fact that me telling them what actually happened to me and the trauma like changed therapy. in a way, but it didn't change anything. Mm. It was therapy getting away for me to let them kind know of like, the truth, yeah, yeah. right? But then they were like, well, at the end of the day, what can they actually do about Nothing. It? Yeah, nothing. Nothing's yeah. going to change. It happened 12 years ago. Like, what could they do? Hey, oh, it's your lucky day. I just invented a time machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like that. And so every time I was meeting with these old friends and telling them the truth of what happened and I felt nothing change afterwards, it was a reality check for me about, like I said before, managing my expectations. Like, what did I think was going to happen if I told them the reality of this? Like, I was expecting me to feel better, but I didn't. And that's when I had to look inside myself like, this is my problem. Yeah. Because they didn't do it. You know, so even if it was like talking to the pastor, the new pastor there, uh, Pastor Jim Han, uh, it was a great guy, a great time meeting and sitting with him. And nothing changed either. Like the, there wasn't even no catharsis you yeah, know, to it's let like, him know. It's like, it's like you're talking to it like a, an after image. Yeah, like, yeah. Like what's, what's the point? So I had to live with that too, right? Like, okay, it is all up to me <laughs> yeah it's all in me to have to deal with this old church trauma you know and to be okay with not being angry at what this is anymore yeah and that's i think part of this whole resolution of going back to church and reconnecting to that like I, i'll keep saying like it, it won't change the way i actually think and believe about what i do with a god in general like i'll say i'm still agnostic but then to be able to take in what they're trying to say up there on the pulpit without being like, that's bullshit. That's fucking hypocritical. I know none of you guys are going to listen to this shit. Yeah. And being a fucking cynic. <laughs> like nobody likes that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and just being like, hey, hear it. And like receive what they're trying to say, you know, the, the good word, the good word but it's because i'm you know, step out of myself and be like you're a fucking debbie downer <laughs> why'd you come yeah. why do you come if you're gonna be so sour right that's not why you made this resolution you know i found out because i went to church for the first time because of pandemic yeah, for the yeah. longest time um we just never went we never got back into it but mario wants to go back to church so i started we went back for the first time last week you know what i found like i can't stand church my fucking ADHD is nuts. Right. Bro, it's crazy because I've never, I think when we're talking. We haven't done that in a while, right? Sit somewhere and yes. like, 
Just focus. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. It's hard. You know, we're doing, we're friends. Yeah. You know, this is interesting stuff. We get to catch up with each other. I could listen to you perfectly fine. But I'm far away from this person on a stage and he, he has a story. He's going into it. Next thing you know, I'm fucking shaking. My uh-huh. legs are shaking. My fucking hands are fucking itchy and shit. Almost like, wait, is this bad comedy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, right? And I'm sitting here just, okay. And I'm like, okay, you're moving too much, David. You need to fucking focus on something else. So I turn on my phone. And I just start trying to write what they're saying, right? Mm. And then that goes into me. Somehow I'm in Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow I'm in Instagram. It's the pepper. It's the, pepper. De- the pe- devil. The pe- devil. Pe- pe- the pe- fucking devil took a hold of my thumbs <laughs> and he opened up Instagram. And then I'm watching this this kid called Chromosome Man that had Down syndrome. <laughs> fucking save the day. Save the day by exploding a building accidentally. <laughs> and I'm giggling. In the middle of a fucking sermon. And Mario was like, what are you laughing at? I was like, that's a good joke, Yeti Bait. Yeah. Right? Because I can't sit fucking still. Yeah. And it makes sense. When I was a kid, I couldn't sit still either. Mm-hmm. And I still have it till this day. It, I, I bet you I could listen better if I could just pace in the back. Right. So the church I'm attending in LA, every, like, it, they have two services, like a different time, like 10 a.m. and noon or something. And whichever one I go to, I see this girl in the back doing yoga throughout the whole service and just listening in, doing her own thing. And I actually really appreciated that. Maybe that's her way. She probably got ADHD like a motherfucker. Yeah. And like I do. She's got a yoga mat in the back and she's just stretching and, and like she's tuned in. Because if I listen to his sermon online when I'm at home, but then I'm just pacing back and forth, like mm-hmm. doing other things. Yeah. I listen to the whole sermon. Right. Yeah. Cause my body is moving, but my mind is still but my, my I'm focusing my attention onto what this person's saying. When I was there at church, I don't remember shit. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember chromosome man. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all I remember. And it went to this like so, so so is it a public speaking problem in the American church today then? Maybe. I, I, do they need to take, do they need to go to an open mic? Yeah. To figure out how to be more engaging and to work a crowd. Maybe. Like, listen, like Erwin McManus is a great speaker, by the way. Yeah. He's awesome. There's times where he speaks where I'm like wrapped in. Yeah. He even got me like to tears a couple of times, but I haven't been in a sitting where I, a setting where I had to sit down <laughs> and just like sit there and pay attention. It would remind me of like school right, right. all over again. And I just started getting itchy. I couldn't sit still. And I'm just like, Moving around and shit, but I don't want to look like a crackhead. I want to, I'm representing Mariel too. And I'm just over here just itching like a motherfucker. And I'm like, if I could just get up and just start doing cartwheels, (laughs) I I could listen to fucking everything. When I was streaming, people really understood. They're like, oh, he really does have ADHD. You have to be doing so much. I'm doing so, I'm moving. I'm talking about 4,000 different subjects. And you can move on. Like that. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit. He wasn't. you're keeping up with this wall Mm -hmm. of fucking comments. Yeah. You're like, you're fucking doing like, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm watching in these streams. I'm like, damn, you're like covering everything. Yeah. yeah. Like, how are you doing this? You I was don't like, want to miss a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I told you, I got ADHD like a motherfucker, dude. Yeah. It's insane. And so I think that was, you know, whoever came onto those streams, they understood the most. They're like, oh, he wasn't fucking lying. Mm-hmm. Like this guy can talk about any idea here, idea here, idea. That's why it's so hard for me to sleep. Yeah, yeah, My yeah, mind, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just literally all these synapses going pop, 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 pop. Well, luckily, like the, at, at least the church, um, both the churches, they've got, you know, they, they have a big projector screen, right? And then some of the pastors I, that I can pay attention to is when they have their notes and outlines put up on the screen, just bullet points, exactly what they're saying, what they're talking about at that moment mm-hmm. right there. That is a great way to get people, like, at least their eyeballs on something. I actually like that yeah. a lot. Like when they have that thing, like this is what we're talking about and it pops mm-hmm. up. I'm like, oh, cool. Now I know. Yeah. Now it's more on. like a keynote and mm-hmm. that's acceptable. You know, a sermon can be in any presentation. Why? Maybe pastors should do more like keynote presentation <laughs> style sermons. Like yeah. I remember how my mind drifted so hard yeah. to the point where, because I'm doing a lot of gardening stuff, right? And then <laughs> like Robin was with me and I forgot that I was supposed to go to church and Mario was a little upset. I was like, oh, that's right. I promised. So I, was, I met up. I, I took Robin to the church and then Robin right. got picked up. <laughs> Because, you know, he was high as fuck. So yeah. <laughs> we went inside to the church. And I, and then Robin just made this joke. He goes, dude, if fucking the pastor talks about 
gardening. He goes, you got to go to church forever. <laughs> yeah. Right? And lo and behold, <laughs> fucking Erwin McManus talks about grapevines. Yo, that's Jesus, bro. That's and, the Holy Spirit, man. And it, and man. it kind of freaked me out a little bit. And I was like, what the fuck? Right? But the problem with me and my ADHD, right? He started talking about grapevines, right? Like how God is like the source. And then we are the fruit. We're the fruit. We're the grapes. We are, you know, we are the fruit that he bears, right? From the, yeah. from, you know, so we're the good deed, the good word, whatever, whatnot, right? But then my mind starts going into this thing of like, how do I grow grapes? What's the type of soil that I need to grow grapes? <laughs> right? I'm Where like, does it say that in the Bible? Yeah. I'm like, how would I trellis these things? Right? Yeah. What part of my backyard could I use to grow grapes? Does it get enough sun? Next thing you know, the, the praise team started and the sermon was done. <laughs> Wait, what I missed? Yeah, I missed. <laughs> How do I get to heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty minutes of that sermon, I was in Napa Valley. Right. <laughs> you know? Thinking about. And then he goes, yeah. "I just want you guys. I want all of us to bow our heads and pray." I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> the, wait, the benediction. <laughs> what the, how, how do I escape here? <laughs> you know? Oh, and I just sat there. And I could tell Mario was looking at me like, oh man, he was really into it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking about grapes. <laughs> this whole time I was thinking about oh grapes. God. I catch myself with that too. I'll be like, oh shit, what the fuck was he saying? Yeah. But you know what works for me? When I go back and listen to the sermon on podcast and I'm driving. Oh. Then I'm all in. Dude. That's So my mom, right? She asked me, she goes, oh, this was actually recently. She starts laughing. She goes, you're in the car again. And she goes, why do you only call me when you're in the car? And I was like, because I can't pay attention to you. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> in the car. <laughs> this something, right? She it's goes, a multitasking thing, right? Yeah. She goes, oh. Because that makes because she goes, when you're on talk to me, talking to me on the phone at home, it sounds like you don't want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not that I don't want to talk to you. I can't focus. Yeah. But when I'm in the car, like for some reason, like my attention's on the road, which is automatic. And then you're the other thing that helps me focus driving. Yeah. So I could talk to you like Because you're in focus mode. Yeah. Dog, man, that's the ADHD, the multitasking part of ADHD. Doing it's something so else helps me listen better. Yeah. yeah. Meryl doesn't get it. She goes, why do you have Netflix on the background? Mm -hmm. or how do you do that and edit a video? So did you doodle a lot in school? Yes. Yeah. Like I got in so much fucking trouble for drawing in my notebooks, but I'm like, you have no idea if I'm drawing, I am listening. Yeah. <laughs> but how, how is that to explain to your parents? I got my fucking ass beat like for all my drawings. Dude. Can I tell you the story like real quick? I know this sound. This is a, I, I would never ever do this again. When I look back at this and I tell this story, I'm very very ashamed of this. When I was at uh, UC Riverside, um, uh, there would be a sort uh, like a sermon. I'm sorry, fucking lecture going on. Uh -huh. I could never pay attention. So what I would do is that I would set up a camera and I would just record it, mm -hmm. right, with this little camera thing. And then you know, for our friends who had the class, we would switch people out. <laughs> so we could just listen to the fucking lecture that, later. All right. That's pretty smart, bro. Pretty fucking smart, right? <laughs> yeah. So only one of us would have to go. Yeah. Holy shit. Right? And so one guy, I don't know why this guy did this shit, but I'm recording this stuff. And then in the meantime, I'm just listening to music. <laughs> right? And this guy comes up and he takes my earbud out of my ear. <laughs> He's like, hey, that's really loud. And then I looked at him and I just said, if you touch me, I'll fucking kill you. Yeah, Don't dude. ever fucking touch me again. Dude, just tap, like, get your attention any other way. Take, touch your property. Your butt out. That's way past this the This is moment. why I'm embarrassed, right? Yeah. He does that shit, right? And by the way, in order for him to do this, he's not sitting next to me. He's sitting in front of me. So he goes, turns around and does that shit. Damn. And so the whole time, you know what I do? I'm such a fucking asshole. I get really close to him and I just go... <sighs> I start breathing into his fucking ear through my nostrils. Oh, God. And I'm making, because I already threatened him at this point. Yeah. I'm making him super uncomfortable. Fucking gets up to a seat, sits somewhere else. I move. <laughs> follow I go behind him. and I follow him. Like a fucking psychopath. Yeah. Because I hated how disrespectful he was to me. It's, it's a little embarrassing. I should never do that shit. What am I going to do? Fucking fight this guy yeah. in the middle of a lecture? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, you fucking idiot? But you're so petty. You're making the most... A minor inconvenience, the worst con inconvenience he's ever going to experience. Yes. And yeah. I just, like that little thing he did to me, I wanted him to feel my fucking yeah. rage, dude. It's a little embarrassing. I would never, ever do that. But you just sparked this <laughs> fucking memory. It was so annoying the way that guy fucking did that shit. And um, another time too, like I was drawing, doodling or some shit. And I just hated when people would judge the shit that I did. Yeah. Right. And I don't know what the fuck it is about fucking white people getting in your fucking business. 
And like, I don't understand what the fuck it is in, you know, not all white people, right? But this specific- It's a like, thing. It's, it's an white, American thing. It's an American it's white thing. It's a white thing American thing. To impose whatever the fuck you're doing on what the fuck I'm doing, right? Because like they have some kind of authority over- Yes. Them. You're just some fucking citizen like I am. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Why the fuck do you care? First of all, the guy with the earbuds things, right? Yeah. Like, okay, maybe you could hear a little background noise from my earbuds, whatever, right? The idea that you think you could come up and touch me like that is entitlement. It's wild. It's the wildest entitlement. Other thing, doodling on my shit, right? This girl, white girl next to me, she goes like, why are you even here if you're not going to pay attention? <laughs> why the fuck do you care? Yeah. Why aren't you paying attention to the lecture? Yeah. I was. <laughs> Let me waste my tuition the way I <laughs> yeah. want to. So it says none yo. Yeah. It's none yo. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that shit, I just, oh, that was the weird. I never knew people who would get into your business like that. Where I grew up, mind your fucking business. That's all that it is. You oh mind your God. business, yeah. you don't get fucked up. That's all that it is. So up Northwest, we have old country buffet. I think you guys have country kitchen buffet. No, like I never the, had that. It's it's a it's like this buffet chain, right? We have a hometown buffet. It's, I think it's the same chain. Oh, yeah. okay, delicious fried chicken, amazing. Yeah, uh, it's a fried chicken story. So, yeah, but in this time we're poor as fuck. You know, like uh, this after the riots, my parents lost everything. You know, my mom works at a Korean market. My dad works at a gas station. And whenever every time they'd save money, and once a month we'd go to the buffet and feast on food we could never have. You know? It was the best. The best. And we go ham because it's just like there, you know? And then I remember we're all eating and this old lady, just, just really fucking old, you know, 80 plus old white lady comes up and be like, why don't you guys eat all the meat off the bones before you go back and get more? And then we were like, Huh? Like, I think my parents at first just did not understand it. And she was reiterating herself, dog, to my parents. Like, you have to eat all the meat off the bone. Then you can get more. And then, yeah, like, that's where I remember my parents were, it was slowly starting to tick after she left. Like and processing it, right? Processing it. And when we were gone to, it, they were fucking, they stayed with that shit. Fuming. Fuming. By the it's time like, we left, the fuck, because yeah, that's what it's like the uh, like the bystander effect, or just like you trying to rationalize what's going on yeah. because it's so out of place from what your normal life is like. Mm -hmm. You can't process it. Yeah, it happens all the time, and I I know what that feels like because there's sometimes too where, <laughs> like, you'll have these moments where somebody will just do something so disrespectful to you, right, and you just take it. And then you're in the car, and all of a sudden you're like, "You're a bitch!" Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like. <laughs> Damn it. God fucking damn it. I should have said it. Yeah. But you just didn't know what was happening. Yeah. And another thing. Yeah. And nobody's there. It could be a week later. You're in the shower. And man, motherfucker, I'm telling you. Like, you did just think about it. It's like, you have know, you seen that uh, Seinfeld episode with George Costanza where George was eating shrimp um, at, at this meeting, right? Mm. And then this guy's like, George, the, the ocean called. They're, uh, they're saying to save some shrimp for later or for the rest of us or right, some shit right. like that, right? Everybody's laughing. And then he, George is in the car. He goes, well, the jerk store called and they're running out of you. <laughs> it's like, dog, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those moments. You're like, what the fuck what did this person fuck? say? Yeah. Like, why do you think it's okay for you to go ahead and tell it's, me how to live my life? Mind your own. Like, it's a fucking buffet. <laughs> I never. It's a buffet. And I'm saying like that type of stuff that would happen in college because I didn't grow up around like white people. Yeah. I never experienced that stuff. So that's why to me, it seems like a white American thing, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I never experienced it elsewhere. Asian people, black people, Mexican people never did any of that shit. They're like, that's fucking weird. And they just let you live your life and do yeah. your own thing. The idea that you feel that you have to civilize me is what it feels like. You have to teach me how to be a, a decent human being. A decent American. Yeah. You know, what the is fuck? America. Dude, now I'm drawing pictures of you naked with weird titties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying attention. Yeah, now I'm paying attention. You got 96% areolas and the rest is titties. <laughs> and you can't do nothing about it. What you going to do about it? Yeah. You going to tell on me? I'll just say it's fucking abstract art. What are you <laughs> talking about? 
I thought this was a liberal college. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck out of here, dude. Oh, you just brought yeah. those two memories back to my fucking head, dude. Embarrassing on the first one. I shouldn't. I was a little aggressive, but that fucking one right there, dude. Yeah. Telling me that I should be paying attention. Basically saying that I'm wasting my call. Who cares, bitch? Yeah. Who the fuck cares? Let me do it my way. It doesn't take away from you. I'm not disturbing the class. I'm sitting here drawing this rooster on top of this fucking barn. Let me draw it. Dude, at, at my gas station, you know, someone had changed. I pulled up ones, right? It was like three ones or four ones, and I handed it to him, right? And apparently they were upside down, one was. And he says, you know, when you go to 7-Eleven, they're all facing up on the same side. I was like, Go to 7-Eleven then. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? Why tell me this, dude? <laughs> you just got four dollars. I don't know what you want from me. You know? <laughs> like, it, what are you gonna do when you go home? Yeah. I told him. I got him. I taught him how to be a very better American. So like I was driving around town too. This is back up there too. And I was on my way to the weed store, right? And Apparently, I was going faster than like 35, mm -hmm. right? And the thing was, this guy follows me to the weed store, right? And then he goes, hey, that was a school zone. The speed limit is 20, right? But here's the thing. It's like not a school. You know when it's a school time? When it flashes. Yeah, there's and you no go school 20. right now. Yeah. But I didn't even say that. I was like so shocked. Cause he followed me first and then he just came to my window. So I rolled it down and then he says, you know, if the cops were there and they find you, they would have took you out of your car and beat your ass. And I'm like, this is like literally, you know, already at the time when like police brutality is already hot. Yeah. And in my head, I didn't even process it. I just, he just went back to his car and left and I went into the weed store and I was like, Wait a minute. Yeah. What the fuck? Why do you have to threaten me like that? Yeah. Right? For speeding, the cops should beat my ass in a time like this? Yeah. And I'm already thinking about this getting enraged. And then I complain to the fucking weed store manager. Like, and then after I'm like, what the fuck is he going to do? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, bro, I'm yeah. high. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, bro. I'm like, I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah. He's you know? like, uh, to be honest with you, man, I don't even know where the fuck I'm at. <laughs> He's like, don't you work here? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, but I can help you, bro. <laughs> you I know Kush? everything. Yeah. That's fucking hilarious, Yeah, it's just man. like you just sit with that. It's just like you, you live with this fucking like, why why do they have to fucking t like say it like that to me, right? So here's what I realized then. I do that to, to the white people, like the customers who give me shit and I start acting like an authority over them mm -mm -mm. about their behavior and how they're acting and then i talk to them like an adult and shit and oh my god they fucking hate it yeah they fucking hate it like when i give them a reality check for their bullshit then they start going off like they're children yeah and then you start then that's when the you gook kind of chick mm -hmm. shit because they run out of shit to say they got nothing they got no but except to call me a gook and then all of it when i'm trying to like i said i do my thing and try to look at shit 35,000 feet in the air and look at two human beings like a man This doesn't feel like this man because of his race should not speak to him that way. And it could not, it might not be anything about race, but the fact that he just doesn't want somebody to speak to him that way because his culture is, is a lot of entitlement. It's entitlement to be able to just tell other people the way it is because of the, oh, because we're a guest reason. in their country. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Like, oh, you let me show, let me educate you how things are here. Yeah, and no, you don't do that to me. You're yeah. in my country. Yeah, and I'm like, but you're behaving like a jackass. Yeah, I didn't know that was an American thing. It's my first, you know, amendment right. And okay, all right, okay, but I'm a lot not allowed to have a first amendment right. You know? Yeah, like I'm I'm not allowed to express myself the way I am with my culture. I have to be like you. You know, that's why you just fucking put your hand on your shoulder and you say, I'll pray for you that you're going to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. Like, what can you do to these people? Like, is it our job to even educate them when they're trying it's, to educate us? 
it's just exhaust it's cyclical it's just like weird just to see that happen you know mm -hmm. and i'm like oh is this this is like some weird like this is probably what we would call weird white american stuff right like i said not like a majority of people um, that yeah. i meet are like, like this that's why white people adopted woke because they realize these things too right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know it's just like some weird shit that i see you know i don't know why in their mind they thought because in their mind it's justice they're doing the right thing <laughs> You know, they're the hero in their story. I mean, it's true. It's right? true. Yeah. They're the hero. Yeah. We're the jackass. Yeah. You know? So what, the, the story that they're writing in their head, they're like, <laughs> this Ching Chong don't speak English. Yeah. So I'm going to be the good American and show them the way. Yeah. So like, as like this, I imagine like this girl, right? This fucking hairy armpit bitch, fucking <laughs> stank ass, fucking dirty blonde haired fucking mother. I still remember her face. Yeah. Like her just coming up to me going like, okay. See, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach this slant-eyed fuck how they, she, he can assimilate better. <laughs> Don't waste our tax dollars and education on doodling on paper. And as she said that, there was a fucking fireworks behind her. Yeah. And then a fucking... Congratulations! This, yeah, I this, did um, it! American flag behind yeah. her, right? <laughs> and then she doesn't even fucking know that I slashed her tires, which is crazy. <laughs> Idiot. Oh my gosh. Anyways, guys, uh, that wraps up this episode of the Genius Brain Podcast. Uh, you could catch Ed at Ed Park VP. Uh, Bible study at Momo's is his podcast. Yeah, yep. Uh, Momo's or Momo? Momo. Momo, not plural. Uh, Genius Brain every Sunday is at 12 p.m. Secret Society is the clothing rat. Check it out. S C R T S O C I E T Y dot com. Check it out. Fashion basics, high quality fucking shit. Uh, put a lot of heart and effort into it. This is our fifth year going on strong. Uh, thank you for the support and love, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Peace.